Today we have a freaking brilliant game by none other than Emery Tate at the US Masters in 1997 where he is playing against an opponent who has 200 rating points stronger than him, Leonid Udasin, who actually has a 2600 rated and at this point Emery Tate only had 2400. So, I mean only only is a strong word, but it's it's quite a sizable gap at that level specifically. But in any case, this is a very interesting game and specifically throughout the mid to end game, you guys can see the absolute brilliance that happens on this board in true Italian fashion and we all love a bit of Italian chess. So uh, let's get right into it. Emery with the white pieces starts off with E4 and the beginning moves are pretty standard theory. I'll go over some lines, just kind of some explanations so you guys can see why these moves get played. But, uh, you know, Leonid responds with bishop or pawn C5. This is the Sicilian defense, knight f3 gets played, pawn to d6, and now just d4. This is kind of trying to open up the position, maybe transpose into an open Sicilian. Uh, next, uh, pawn takes d4, this is actually the best move in the position, keeps a draw, 0-0 zero, zero territory, and now knight takes d4. Next is knight f6, and at this point you've transposed into an open Sicilian, or an open variation of the Sicilian, and white responds with knight to c3. Still developing the pieces, nothing too crazy happening on the board. Pawn to a6 gets played, preventing bishop b5. Obviously you don't want these checks, and also preparing uh, pawn to b5, maybe putting the bishop on b7. Still some fairly standard tactics, pretty nice position, I mean, everyone would love this in an opening. It's all just falling into everyone's books, uh, all of their pre preparations and everything. It's pretty pretty standard for people at that level. Anyways, next pawn c4 gets, or uh, bishop c4 gets played. Uh, putting, you know, developing the bishop, preparing to put it on b3, putting some pressure on f7. And uh, pawn to d, uh, e6 gets played at this point, blocking the bishop's access to f7, just in case some lines might have opened up. Maybe queen f3 at some point, maybe bishop, uh, bishop there. Queen f3, maybe some attacks on the knight might have happened, or maybe some e5 action. There was a lot of things that got prevented with e6, and it's still a pretty good move. Uh, still draws territory. Bishop comes back to b3, as we discussed. Now knight to d7. Pretty pretty much most people will play knight to, knight to c6, but then you're kind of blocking your bishop, because then after b5, bishop b7, the knight is, the knight is stopping the, you know for you from getting this square. Also, the knight can trade off, and then bishop comes here, is blocked in by its own pawn. It's really not that great. So knight to d7, pretty standard. Queen e2, um, <clears throat> still developing pieces as normal I, I don't know developing the queen at this point uh, maybe most people would opt for something like bishop g5 but then you just kicked away and then you can trade if you like but it's really there's really no point to it because the knight on d7 and now knight to c5 so knight c5 once again putting pressure here and double attacking double attacking this uh this square so um you know uh white responds with a very lovely already sort of messing with the position a bit with g5 or g4 uh, preparing g5 to kick away one of the attackers of the of the e4 pawn but um leonid actually responds with b5 saying i don't really care about you pushing g5 i'm going to develop this and attack one of your defenders of this pawn and that's how we're going to trade this off but emery plays g5 himself and now the knight only has two squares to go back to so he goes back to d7 and um here here is uh here it gets quite exciting so bishop comes to d5 and when i first saw this i was like what the hell is this you know so i, I couldn't quite get my head around it but then uh, upon looking on it further i kind of realized that if you take this pawn take this with the pawn uh you don't take back with the pawn because you know it comes with a check but you can easily just block it play queen eight queen e7 and force a trade because this is pinned to its own king so here you would play knight c6 and then the attack the queen first and obviously queen b6 moves maybe this will work against a, a lower rated player but if pawn takes with check if bishop blocks this would be checkmate uh, obviously leonid would not play something as uh sorry obviously leonid would not play something as uh, as silly as that uh so here here um you know obviously what would happen is um a pawn would take on d5, opening up the attack, but uh, realistically you can block with many pieces. Uh, whatever you block with, uh, it's probably best to just give back the material. If pawn take, if queen takes, if knight comes here, obviously f4, so you're kind of giving back the material in this way. If knight comes to here, uh, obviously if pawn takes, this is also kind of winning some material, but then this comes with check, winning it back once again, but this opens up an attack on the rook, so you have to play something like rook, G, rook g1, and... White's really not going to castle for the rest of the game because there'd be too much pressure on the queen side. The pawns are too far advanced. So it really wouldn't be something that either player would want to go into. So anyways, in the actual game, um, it, it's still a bit of an advantage for white though, I think. I think personally. This is also attacking the rook, by the way, just so you notice. Uh, the 
Leonid actually does not go for the go for the trade off. He goes for bishop to b7. Bishop to b7, pretty nice move. Saying, all right, I don't like your bishop here, so let me just trade it off. Uh, so bishop takes on b7, and now just knight takes back on b7. So still pretty okay position. It got a little bit little bit tricky there for a second, and maybe would have worked against some low rated players. But Leonid is too strong to fall for the tricks. And uh, here Emery plays a4, opening up the a file. So I mean, the idea is obvious. So if you uh, obviously if you take, just play the rook to a4, and now you have this lovely lovely fourth rank for the rook also you have a semi-open a file for the rooks to, to mess around with uh, so here leonid actually takes on a4 and then rook takes on a4 and still in drawish territory nothing too crazy here and now just knight to c5 knight c5 attacking the rook on a4 rook comes back to a3 still occupying the third rank maybe knight might move at some point and then rook might come to here putting some pressure on the king side but just but just queen to b6 so queen b6 uh, putting pressure on the b2 pawn uh, also opening up this nice diagonal for the queen a little bit if knight ever moves knight ever moves whatever it may be obviously not there but somewhere else <laughs> queen to b6 gets played and this is actually getting quite spicy because um there's quite a lot of quite a lot of options here for for white but he just simply castles i mean who the hell would castle here first of all your g file is half open but apparently this is okay for white in fact it's even slightly better it's plus 0.4 so uh, I mean, it, it would take quite a quite a mastermind to see that. I personally wouldn't play it because I'm, I'm not that good, obviously. But like, maybe some of you guys who are over two thousand in the chat might might see this thing, and that's an obvious move. But uh, but here, just bishop b bishop b seven, uh, preparing to castle. Obviously, there's no attack here because this is defended. So, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> the nonchalant king h one gets played by uh, by Emery Tate, and this is truly in Italian fashion because. It's uh, it's oftentimes when you play the king to h1 that you're preparing an absolutely sinister attack, and uh, I believe it is coming, and you guys are gonna love how it is gonna come. It's 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 such an, a spectacular position from here on out, uh, because now just after castles, pawn to b4 gets played, attacking this knight and saying if you take here, uh, you're actually in big trouble because now I'm just forking both. So. You're forking both the queen and the bishop, and you can't defend both. So after, say, queen moves here or something, here you pick up this with check, and you just have a nicer position. And, um, oh, I remember looking over this line a bit, because now if, if, if king comes to h8, uh, you simply play knight here. And after knight here, there is really very little you can do about preventing queen, rook to h3. So let's say pawn takes uh, here, just rook h3. Rook h3, pre preparing to sacrifice the rook. Uh, say if the pawn comes forward... Uh, I believe you take here with the rook. That's probably the best move. And pawn takes and just queen h5. Queen h5 and there's v there's nothing you can do to prevent this attack. An absolutely spectacular position. Even here is just checkmate. Uh, because the knight is beautifully controlling both of these squares. This is truly like something in a witty alien game. Absolutely incredible. Um, so... That's the kind of the beauty of, uh, of of that pawn to b4 move. It's completely poison pawn. You don't want to take it because you're going to sacrifice another knight afterwards. So here Leonid plays knight to a4 saying, if you want to take this knight, I'll take your knight here. If you want to take this knight, I'll take your knight here. So it's just offering a trade of knights at this point. Uh, uh, Emery does not go for the trade. Instead, he sacrifices a knight and the idea is that if you take here, the idea is to fork here again after something like queen, queen to d8. You'd be taking here and putting too much pressure on this position. F6 square trying to open up the king side. The bishop will have nowhere to go. So something like here, here, here. And you have to prevent this as soon as you can. So potentially even something like this could get played. And this is double, double, double attack, double defended. But once again, you have this. You have quite a lot of moves. Bishop takes g5 is actually good here. Um, you know, there's quite a lot, quite a lot to work with. You're also, you're also still attacking the a4 knight. So it is, it is quite an interesting sacrifice. Once again, it ends up in drawage ter territory of best play. Uh, so in the actual position, this did happen, and in an Emery played e takes f5, and um, it still looks like you're losing. It looks like you're just giving up a piece for nothing. But then again, you have to remember that this a4 knight is hanging. But that is not what Emery is interested in. You are interested in attacking that king with every piece that you've got. So here, here, um, rook to d8 gets uh, rook to e8 gets played by Leonid. And queen h5, preemptively striking, trying to put some pressure on this on this h file by the queen. Uh, knight comes back, says you don't have anything yet, so I'm just gonna start just taking away some of your attackers. If knight takes, just queen takes. So here, 
Uh, Emery says, I ain't interested in the knight. I already told you, I don't want nothing to do with the queen side. I want to threaten your king. And so he plays rook to h3. Very spectacular move. Obviously threatening checkmate. There's nothing else he could be threatening here. But obviously, uh, Leonid can go back to f8 and defend with the knight. Uh, this is obviously covering the h7 square, that's why. But here is where it gets so spicy that I absolutely adore this position. Now, I, when I was reviewing it, I was just like, mind blown. There's so much to do here. Okay, so here is where it gets proper. Okay, so obviously you play e f6. This is a pretty, like, you know, no-brainer. Everyone would find this. But it's the response to f6 that determines the rest of the game. So here... And knight takes d5 gets played by Leonid. And knight takes d5. Obviously, it makes sense. You're taking away. You're taking away one. Of, you're taking away one of the knights. And uh, you know, saying you can take this if you like. But uh, Emery doesn't go for it. He goes for it. pawn takes g7, threatening this knight. Uh, and here's where it gets proper, proper spicy once again because now after king takes g7, uh, just bishop to b2 opening up this attack so obviously the bishop can block the knight can block there's many things that can block this position but the best is to go back to g8 and that is exactly what leonid plays because you don't want to give up material when you're up in such an advantage and it is kind of an ego thing i believe maybe it's my personal opinion but now it's simply just uh pawn to, pawn to g6 pawn g6 does get the job done i was obviously reviewing queen h6 as well but queen h6 gives up too many uh, too many opportunities for uh for black to defend so it, like queen h6 and now just just f6 and f6 it just allows you to close up this file uh you know with f6 you're you're kind of defending this too many times so if pawn takes just here and this is defended way too many times rook g1 is still an option but uh, but here just uh just just king f7 and the king just escapes at this point uh, there's not much you can do to def stop the king from escaping it's pretty decent uh, the idea is to just get away from all the attackers so you can uh, impose your own attack at some point after uh, after bishop g <laughs> after king g8 pawn g6 gets played and uh, and here bishop to f6 gets played saying okay we need to sorry guys there was a bit of a noise there uh, sorry, my antivirus came up. <laughs> uh, so after g6 gets played, bishop to f6 gets played, and uh, saying, right, we need to start trading off because I don't want you on this diagonal. I want my, my pawn. Uh, my knight is defending h7. I don't want you on this diagonal, putting more pressure on my king. So here, he ignores it. He says, you can have my bishop all you like, but first I'm going to pick up one of your rooks. And so he gives, uh, he takes on, on f7 with check. King has to move forward here. And after king h8, there is only one square. There's actually two ways to win this, but uh, obviously Emery opts for rook g1. Um, so after rook g1, you have uh, obviously rook e1. So, uh, so after rook e1, you're saying, all right, I want to keep you away from this file. So I'm going to pin your rook to here and make you take it. Because if you don't take it, I'm going to take next. And so, uh, you know, Emery says, okay, I'll take it then. See what you got for me, rook e1. And now bishop takes b2. Bishop takes b2. Uh, is basically taking away another attacker from the king side but remember this is still covered by the knight and here rook to e8 the absolutely stunning attack this attack this because now if the queen moves here takes if rook takes this is checkmate it's just such an incredible little move and I th a lot of people would probably see this as well at this point but it's just something you don't you know, it's got, you got a lot of pressure. So if you could see this far ahead, fair play to you, you know, especially in the US Masters game. So here, Leonid finds uh, the best move by the engine is actually to trade to offer a trade of queens. So if rook takes, just knight takes. But uh, once again, this is what uh, Emery had in mind. So rook takes d8, rook takes d8, queen to h5. And here, actually, I remember when I first saw this as well, I was pretty, I was pretty psyched because I didn't really know how this was going to end. Uh, I was thinking like, okay, shouldn't this be the attack over? Obviously, like a rook, uh, no, three pieces for a queen. It's playable. It's playable for, for black. But uh, just look at this pass pawn. It's just way too strong. It's covering too many squares and the king can never get access to it. So uh, obviously, it's not it's not ideal for black. Here, knight to, knight to e4 gets played. Um, maybe trying to set up some kind of forks here. 
on the king, but Emery's not going to fall for that. Uh, here he plays uh, just queen h4, covering the f2 square, stopping any forks, any attacks, uh, obviously also attacking this knight. You can defend it in a few ways, but none of them are really ideal. It also attacks the rook, so I mean, you're kind of just giving up the knight here, to be completely honest with you. Um, you also have this bishop, bishop f6 is probably an option here, and uh, he actually just goes back with knight f6, blocking in the attack on the rook, saying giving up on the f2 pawn with check, and here just the nonchalant rook to g3, and... Um, Rook g3 is pretty, pretty, pretty obvious. Like, I mean, the idea is uh, is obviously give up the rook, uh, give up the queen for a bishop takes, and then just rook here is checkmate. It's pretty obvious, but maybe not so much under this time pressure at this at an event at this scale. Uh, here, just <laughs> here, just um, uh, Black says, okay, I'm you're no longer attacking the h7 square, so I'm just gonna bring my knight to d7, and and here just queen g5, and after queen g5, Black actually resigned the game. And the reason being is that you cannot prevent checkmate. There's absolutely no way of doing it. You play something like knight g4, kind of putting putting something between the rook and the queen, uh, but then just queen takes g4, and 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 once again you're you're doubling up here, and there's there's really nothing you can do. Even rook takes g4 would have been fine. Uh, so it's it's really just beautiful. So like to to have this kind of a position in in a U.S. Masters game against somebody who's two two hundred rating points higher than you is quite incredible. Uh, obviously like. There's really nothing you can do to stop this. So, like, if you just allow it, let's say you play something like this. Uh, here, here is checkmate. Uh, I mean, if you play something like I don't even know, like I don't know, rook there. We'll say this is still checkmate after rook takes. This is checkmate. There's just nothing you can do to prevent checkmate here. So anyway, I thought this was a pretty beautiful game. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the Tate brothers are in quite a quite the spotlight, right? Controversial spotlight. Um, either way, I know, you know, obviously found out that that their dad was a chess player. That that was quite incredible. I thought I'd check him out. Apparently, he was a gifted player, very well known. He passed away a few years back, uh, so R.I.P. Rest in peace. Uh, you know, but uh, he was an incredible player and dedicated his whole life to the game. So, thought I'd just do a video to honor it and uh, see where it goes. So, hope you enjoyed. Drop a follow, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Uh, like the video, share it with your friends, family, everyone you know. Uh, maybe you can watch it all together for Christmas. But uh, <laughs> all right, have a great rest of your day, guys. Take care.